Hello and welcome to the 32nd episode of the Python tutorial series. In last week's video we looked at how to perform integration in Python. In case you missed it, I'll leave a link to it in the top right hand corner of your screen and in the video description so you can check it out at the end of this video. Also, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any upcoming episodes. Today we will learn how to perform interpolation using the SciPy library. But first, let's quickly review what interpolation is. Let's assume we have a set of data points on a graph. These points collectively form an imaginary function. So what if I wanted to calculate the value of this imaginary function, let's say for 1? Well, as I'm sure you can see, the value of the function at x equals 1 will depend on the shape of the function between 0 and 2. Given that we don't know what the actual function looks like, because all we have are individual data points, we have to make an assumption. So let's zoom into the interval between 0 and 2. We could now assume that the function is linear, and that would give a value for x equals 1 of 3.5. Alternatively, the function could also be a quadratic, which would result in its value at 1 being approximately 1.8. Thirdly, it could also be a cubic, which would further reduce its value at 1 to being closer to 1.05. As a last option, it could also be some weird squiggly function, which we can't even imagine. Well, the process of assuming the nature of the function and using it to calculate the value of a point somewhere between those we already have is called interpolation. Having seen a few different cases, let's now look at how to implement basic linear interpolation in Python. As you can see, here we have the dataset I showed you earlier. Our first step will be to create the linear interpolation function. We can call it f, short for function, and write f equals interp1d of x, comma, y, comma, kind equals linear. Now the interp1d function is contained within the scipy.interpolate library. And looking at the inputs of the interp1d function, we can see that we have our x and y lists, as well as a third argument which specifies the type of interpolation we are going to employ. In this case, we chose linear, but we could also have selected quadratic or cubic, as well as many other options. I'll leave a link to the full interp1d guide in the video description. Now that we have our interpolation function, the rest of the process is as easy as running our code and then calling our function and giving it as an argument the x value for which we want to perform the interpolation. In this case, we can give it a value of 1. And as you can see, we have correctly calculated the value as being 3.5. I'll leave it up to you to try quadratic and cubic interpolation, and if you do it correctly, you should get the values I showed you earlier in the graph. I should also point out that today we looked at 1D interpolation, but 2D interpolation can also be performed using the interp2D function, which is available in the SciPy library. This allows you to interpolate data in a three-dimensional space rather than in a two-dimensional plane. We don't have time to look at this today, but if you would like me to explain how it works and show you an example or two, let me know in the comments below. As always, I'll leave a link to my previous tutorial videos in the top right-hand corner of your screen and in the video description. If you feel brave enough to take on my Python coding challenges, you can access these through the banner in the top right hand corner of your screen or through the link in the video description. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. 
Now, all that's left for me to say is see you next week, and until then, happy coding!